one of the students I helped with his extended essay, finding the lab, uh, getting all the paperwork, all the approval, permissions, paperwork, um, helping a little bit with the with the test, with the experimental method and using the equipment. Uh, one of these kids uh, applied to, to a university overseas. There was a hiccup, a wrinkle in the process, a glitch in the matrix. He didn't get quite completely admitted. He was in some state of Heisenberg in, in the Terminal C, in which that he was almost admitted, but not really. Apparently, all the information he put on his file and submitted to the college put him in the cusp, the smack dab, in the middle of a defense, in which that they answer back and they say, well, you, we almost are going to admit you, but not quite because your uh, file is almost but not quite what we want. And they said, now, if you can send us more information about you, you know, this would yet tip the scale. He just needed a little push. This was almost like when Porsche discussed that Balthasar is admonishing um, Shylock in the scale scene in the Duck's Court scene in Merchant of Venice. If the scale moves by a twentieth of a gram or by the width of a hair, I brought a letter of recommendation describing the work he did on his extended essay. I was completely objective, completely factual. You know, I'm a Design engine, corporate design engineer, I've uh, been a journalist for 13 years and I'm a college professor, I stick to the facts. I, I am not one for exaggeration. I mean, I like this kid, but I just said what he did. He got admitted. Kid was in a state of Heisenberg and determinacy. He wasn't quite admitted, he wasn't quite rejected, he was in some Officers of admission limbo, like a toss coin that falls on the side, on its side. Now, uh, from the little that I know of you, it seems to me that you are chewing, that you are, your admission to the college of your choice uh, is a done deal uh, here or in Peru or overseas, uh, to be, to tell you the truth. Um, um, but as opposed to multipurposing in biological and other systems like having one thing work two or three or four different purposes, us in design engineers are very fond of the concept of redundancy. We have one or two or three or four things doing the same because that way it is a sure thing in a cinch. It's going to come heck or high water. It's a done deal. It is going to work no matter what. So the fourth use of your research project would be um, to prepare some kind of document showing your work and, and this to be included in your uh, admission file, the, the information you sent to be admitted. Now, this won't work in Peru because from the little I know, it's basically your admission in trans examinations. They don't look at experience. But uh, what I, I, I know about the United States, I don't know other countries, but uh, I believe that definitely the United States and most European UK countries do take additional information. And uh, again, in reality, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't think, for you to be admitted or not, because I don't think that's really in doubt. 
Um, but there is the, once you get admitted to college, there's the other issue, which is the fiduciary, monetary, economic, financial issue. You have to pay for college. And this is the thing. You know, the, the issue of paying for college, I mean, there's all, all, all this information I have on item one. And basically, typically, people from the country, there, there is some unbelievably complicated uh, admission requirements in which, th this is the equation, the co colleges in the United States try to attract smart kids, but you know, being a, 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 an open economy, free economy, capitalism, colleges have to get money. They don't work on air. They don't work from air. They need to get paid. So this is, they have two objectives, attract smart college, smart kids and, at, and be paid. Now, as much as I, one would want it, the distribution of smartness in kids and the distribution of money in kids is not correlated and is not proportional. The smartest kids don't have them, um, you know, being smart or not and having money or not are, are two different things. So this is the problem for the college, how to get smart kids and how to get money, how to get paid. So there comes all the things about the scholarships. If they find a smart kid that they want to have, see, if if uh, imagine that you own a college, okay? Imagine that you are the head teacher of the college, and 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 your purpose is to make your college an, import, an important college. Now, how does a college become important? If it has excellent students. Now, how do you get excellent students? That's an incredibly complicated question, but one thing would be to admit intelligent people. To admit as five, six, six, six high school graduates who are smart. Don't get the dumb ones. You would think if you were a head teacher of some university, president of the university, you would think You know, that seems easy to think. So what happens is you get some, you know, average smart kids with average smart money, you charge them. You get uh, smart kids with lots of money, you charge them a lot. Here comes the problem. What happened with the smart kids with less than average money? You want to get them, but the kid cannot afford the university. But you, as a teacher, want to get a kid. You give him what you call a scholarship, but it's recently a rebate, a discount. You get He gets an education with a discount. I mean, it's called a scholarship, but it's a discount. Now, this works uh, as, as you are a seasoned traveler. You know this works on airline tickets. You have an airplane that you need to pack, but... Everybody pays a different amount, and it depends on every, and, you know, really complicated equations, statistical equations. But now, as you have season three of traveler, you know that this riser, there is the load equation, because if you if you own, if you are the airplane CEO. What you want to have is your airplanes pack. But since this is a competition and there are other airlines in the same route, you guys, the different airlines are chasing after the same market. So how do you do that? Well, by playing with the prices. Uh, in order to not fly with an empty plane, and this is the same 
for a classroom for the class the the in, incoming class you know you want you want it packed you don't want it empty so what does all have to do with Peruvian students they automatically get a hundred percent charge they, they have no rebate that there's a it is very, very, very unusual that they get some any kind of a scholarship. This is a discounted price. It's probably scholarship because it sounds so much better. Because <laughs> calling a discounting education makes it sound it's not, but make it make it sound as a not better education. Imagine going to Harvard over discounted education. That sounds silly. So calling it a scholarship is better, but it's really a discount, a discount, a discounted price. So, uh, you know, if you if you're taking a business course, or uh, there are discounts. So, you know, if you really convince some college, if you want to go to a certain college. And it just so happens that the college likes you a lot. You know, you may get a discount. Now, I, I, I like money. I want to get money. I think money is great. Now, I don't think that money makes you a better person. I'm an engineer. I think money is a tool. And I like to have more tools and better tools. And I can do things when I have tools. And when I don't have the tool, I cannot do things. So, I've traveled a little bit. And sometimes I had to go first class. Now, now there was the possibility I could do it. I would recommend it. The food is better. You don't get peanuts. You get lobster. The chairs, the the seats are more comfortable. I mean, I'm, I'm not a tiny person. I'm I'm average. Um, I'm you know average height, but on some on the cramped tourist sections, my knees keep bouncing, bumping in the front seat. Um. So, yeah, flying first class is great. You know, you pay twice as much money for a four-hour flight, but you get better food. Now, one time, <laughs> I was so busy that I was working all through my flight from the West Coast to the East Coast. For, and I was going on vacation, and, you know, I was working on the damn plane. Uh, Finishing writing all the instructions for all people in the office doing my absence. These were in the days of um, you know, email. This was in the days of faxes, you know, in the Neolithic era. <laughs> so I get on the play and get on the airport. The first thing I do is get on a fax back to the office and send them a 10, 10, 10 page fax and do this while I'm gone and don't mess things up. Some other time, I was so tired, I fell asleep the whole thing, you know, the whole Atlanta-Boston flight. I don't remember. It must be very nice first class, but I don't remember. My trip to Mexico first class was nice. That, it was a very amusing flight attendant. He was flight attendant slash comedian. He, he was really fun. He put me in a great mood. So, and again, you know, I'm, I'm all, you know, if, if you can pay full price, fantastic. I mean, I pay twice as much for a four hour flight, those three times. Now, if you want to pay a four year education and pay twice as much, fantastic. But if there are a chance you can get on a four year period, if you can get a discount, you know, I'm the math major, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm very fond of, I'm, I'm great at maths. It is better. So, 
prepare some presentation showing what you learn, showing your fitness for college education. Okay. You're going to talk about your project, but the point is not the project. The point is not the 3D tissues. The point is how you face your project, what you the things you had to learn on your own, not in the things you had. Show me the things you did in order to learn. Not just that you had to sit and read a book in order to learn. I mean, I read books all the time. But you had to organize yourself. You have to show initiative. You have to show communications, talking to everybody at UTEC to find out what you were going to do. But the point is fitness for learning things and assuming you're going to be in the sciences, you know, knowing you're weighing a lab. I was rereading one of your messages, the one that you says, I am doing much more than that. That is my new motto. I'm thinking of having it carved on my mantra. I got to ask you, have you met Steve Alberto Goldberg? I mean, he's five, five, nine, 170 pounds speaks Spanish with perfect accent, makes, makes <laughs> hilarious grammatical mistake, mistakes. Me duele la teta. <laughs> he mixed up head, which in French is tet, and he thought that in, <laughs> in Spanish would be teta. Me duele la teta. <laughs> I also died. Steve, the one that always under promise and offer deliver. Do more than what is expected of you. Exceed expectations. Live a life less ordinary. Like my second cousin, a hundred times removed in the, in the U.S., Finishes high school, decides to join the armed forces, joins the Navy. Other people get into boot camp, he joined the Navy SEALs. I am glad I'm his favorite cousin. I would be concerned of having a Navy SEAL cousin. They are scary. Turns out that they are supposed to be indistinguishable, but they look like mostly normal people so he gets into navy seals and then he gets into marine mammal program and he starts training other people have in the canine forces he joins the marine forces and what does he do train seals train dolphins train dolphins to be bodyguards to aircraft carriers and the water is I got to see him, I got to see him and his his dolphins. I, I got to talk to the one day I I went visit him in the base in San Diego and uh, and he says let's go to the to the dolphin pool but just wait and I'll wave you in. So he walks in, nothing happens. He turns to me, waves me in, and I just walk in, not sure what is going to happen. And suddenly, dolphin jumps out of the water, and he smiles at me, and, smiles at me and, and Andrew says, well, say hi to the dolphin. I say, hi, dolphin, and the dolphin starts laughing, ha, 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 like dolphins do. You know, very friendly dolphin. I'm going like, Dolphin didn't come up with you walking and came up when I came I said, sure, he does. The dolphin knows I'm the teacher, I'm the trainer, so he doesn't want to talk to me, but he knows you're a visitor and he wants to meet you. 
because you maybe give him fish or give the dolphin fish and the dolphin waves thank you and just go, go swimming with his fish. Dolphins have toys. Andrew's dolphins do do the day of the week and knew that there were school days and they knew there were week weekend days. 